What's up guys, TechLab here. Now, today's video is a little bit different because I do not recommend you do this at all. The only reason that we're doing this video and we have this system is because you guys asked me to build it. Recently, I've done a couple of videos where I've built systems for unbelievable prices. The first was a gaming PC for just £100 and then I challenged myself to do even better by halving the budget and building one for £50. But then you guys, probably for a joke, actually said, try to build one for £20 and that's exactly what I've done. Now, like I say, this video is not a build guide. It is not a recommendation for you to go out and build something like this. This was purely put as a challenge from you guys to me to see if I could build a system for £20. And of course, that system has to be able to game. It needs to be a gaming PC. And I've purely just done it for fun. Do not actually go out and do this because a lot of people do follow some of the more fun videos that we do. And then they kind of complain at the performance afterwards. I will show the performance of this machine, as I always do. So you should know exactly what it is. But this system is not exactly what you think it is. It is in a case from a Lenovo system, but what's inside of it is not Lenovo at all. This challenge wasn't even as difficult as I found it was. All I had to do though was actually leave the comfort of my own home. You can't really purchase enough parts for as cheap as you need to, to be able to build a system like this online. Not unless you get some super crazy eBay kind of bidding. So parts have actually come from different places. The case itself was actually a bit of a dumpster dive. I found somebody actually throwing it out, so there was nothing inside of it. It was completely bare and I offered them two pounds for it. So I managed to get the case pretty cheap, but at least it is just a box. It's got a bit of ventilation on the front and it's got enough space to put all the components we've got inside of it. But let's take a look inside and see what we've got. Now, of course, this case is a micro ATX case and it's very easy to install things into. There is no real proprietary systems here. There is a bit of weirdness when it comes to the cables on the front. The cables are there but you just need to kind of just switch some pins around we're not going to go into a guide on that because you could simply just use a cardboard box which was one of the things that we were originally going to do but when i saw this case i thought why not i've got two pounds left in my budget let's just pick this case up and fit things in it really easy to remove things on lenovo pcs as we've seen in the past just a couple of thumb screws on this back and then you can just simply slide the side off like this now when it comes to components in this system you will recognize a couple of things for the power supply, we have reused that from our £50 gaming PC. And the memory as well was a couple of sticks of uh, four gigabytes of DDR3 that we managed to pick up from CEX for that video too. So they were actually covered. We'll go through the full pricing on this in a minute. When it comes to the other components, we are actually at a little bit of a loss. The case did come with a CD drive or a DVD writer. Nobody really uses them anymore, but I've left it in because it kind of covers up a hole. For storage, I picked up a 250 gigabyte hard drive just really i would not recommend anybody using a hard drive anymore but i just simply did not have the budget to go for an ssd if you are building any type of system even if you have a very limited budget make sure you save up for an ssd it is really going to change the way that the system behaves and the amount of time you wait for things when it comes to the other components though i'm at a little bit of a loss and the reason for that is because i just picked up what it would actually fit in the budget i don't 100 percent know what it is for the motherboard, it is an FM2 Plus motherboard, but for the CPU, I have no idea. It could be absolutely anything in here, and I don't even know if it works. I've built the system, and hopefully it turns on and we can actually get a picture. I'm not quite sure yet. And then for the graphics card, because you do need a graphics card to be a gaming PC. Again, I don't know what it is. It could be pretty much anything. Looking at pictures online, and, and particularly looking at the IO on the back of it, we don't have a proper HDMI port, so I'm considering it's probably something like a GTX 200 series or a GTX 400 series it also only accepts a six pin pci express connection so it can't be anything ridiculously high it's not going to be an 80 class card i don't think it's probably going to be something like a gtx 260 or something like that but anyway we'll turn the system on and we'll figure it out the one thing that we need to do is obviously see if it will actually work and then we need to try and see if we can get any games on it this was going to take a while folks because running on a hard drive it's going to be really slow to get installed it's going to be really slow to get games running but hopefully when you're inside a game it runs perfectly fine but then how much did i pay for all of the components individually now the motherboard and cpu came as a bit of combination i actually had to leave my home to be able to get these and i kind of found them at what we call more of like a jumble sale i'm not quite sure what people in the us will call this um, but it's fundamentally where people will just get rid of their old junk I saw the board, I knew that it was an FM2 Plus board by the number on it, and I could see that there is a CPU in it underneath the cooler, and I pretty much picked both of them up for £5. The RAM of course came from CEX from the previous video at a cost of £1.50, 
And then the hard drive I managed to get from eBay for just £2. That is actually not a bad price to pay for a 250 gigabyte hard drive, but nobody's really buying them anymore because they're too small for mass storage and they're too slow to be an operating system drive. So you can pick them up super cheap. The case, of course, was a bit of a dumpster dive there where I offered somebody £2 for it while they were throwing it out, so I managed to get that for that. And then the power supply, of course, is £5 for that one because we used it in a previous video and we know we picked that one up locally. The card, which I'm not 100% sure what it actually is, cost me £4 and that again I had to leave the comfort of my home and go to, again, what we call jumble sales really here. And that's the reason why I don't know what it is because Finding a graphics card for £4 is near impossible, so I just bought it anyway. I don't know if the graphics card even works. I don't even know if the motherboard works. I don't even know if the CPU is any good. But I'm sure when we get it actually installed and we start to check those kind of things out, we'll see pretty much see what it is. But let's do that. Let's get this system onto the desk and see what we've got inside. Okay, so the system actually does turn on and we've managed to get into the BIOS. We can actually check what the CPU is, make sure that the RAM's working and everything from here. Although I don't think we can actually tell what graphics card we're actually running. I'm not quite sure. From the BIOS itself though, we can see that actually installed into this system is an AMD A6 6400K APU with Radeon HD graphics. It also has picked up both of our sticks of four gigabytes of DDR3, which is currently running at 1333 megahertz. So I think the CPU is actually probably gonna be a big issue here because they are not fast at all. The FM2 CPUs, this isn't even a good one. This is actually an APU, so it's gonna be super slow. I'm not even 100% sure how many cores and threads I have on these. I think they're uh, dual cores, I think. I think it's a dual core processor, or at least it's only got two threads or something. But apart from that, this is what we've got, and this is what we're gonna get with the money that we've paid. But the system has booted up, it's all spinning. I've left it completely as it was. I haven't cleaned a single thing, so maybe the thermal paste is really bad too. I don't know, but I'm just glad that it actually worked. To be honest, I'm so surprised that I actually got a picture from that graphics card and I've managed to get into the bias and things are working perfectly fine. It is on an ASRock board, of course, because you can see it's the ASRock kind of setup utility here. And I think it's actually pretty cool looking. I'm surprised that they don't really make them like this anymore. We've got some twinkling stars in the background. That's probably all the graphics card can probably display, but we'll find that out when we actually start playing some games. The system itself, though, is really noisy. The loudest thing in there is that hard drive and it's going to take a while to get Windows installed. But what we'll do is we'll drop this system down now. We're going to get Windows installed and then, of course, we're going to try to play some games. One eternity later. Now, I'm not going to lie, installing Windows onto a system that only has a hard drive in it is not just a slow process. It is an absolute painful process. It took nearly a day to get Windows on here and that wasn't even installing games. It took even further time to be able to get games installed. And then actually when just trying the odd game just to see it would even start, of course, you are very limited on what you can actually do with a system like this. So having to then reinstall other games and other games, it was just absolutely painful. Do not build a system in 2024 with a hard drive as your operating system drive because it just simply will be more painful than it's worth. We did actually get Windows on here and I've actually also put the side on the case because I'm tired of hearing that hard drive grind away. It is clearly the hard drive that is causing us issues here and the CPU is not helping at all because the CPU is really bad. I'm, I'm going to admit it. The CPU is really bad. I'm not really sure what AMD were playing at when they kind of released them ones. This is just a copy of Windows 10 Professional, so it should be able to actually cope with this okay, but everything is super slow, and I'm sure you guys will see that in a minute. One bonus is that the DVD drive does work. I'm not really sure if that is a bonus or not, but it opens. You don't want to do that too often, though, because as soon as you close it, Windows decides to check to see if the drive actually has a disk in it, and everything goes even slower. So avoid pressing the button, don't bother doing that. I did actually manage to get a few games on here. The first thing that we'll do though is we'll go check on that graphics card. I'll show you what is actually in it. I was kind of nearly correct on my assumptions, particularly from pictures that I saw, but if we just head over to Task Manager, which is going to be quite slow, as you see, it just took a few seconds to get up. That was actually pretty fast, really, compared to what else is get, what else it's done in the past. We'll pop over to Performance tab, and then we'll go down to the graphics card. So the graphics card we are using is an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 460. Now that is a one gigabyte card. So again, that is going to be a pretty big limiting factor in this system, but not as much as that CPU and definitely not as much as the hard drive either. I think the GPU in this is actually probably the fastest thing and it is something that you guys wouldn't buy today anyway. So we are really stretching it here, which means that we've got a really kind of 
temper in the games that we can even try but can it actually play any games that is a test if it can play a game that is a reasonably decent game that people would still play today then of course it is a gaming PC and we've managed to meet your challenge. Now, even though this system is really old, of course it can still play really old games. We're not going to bother trying anything like Duke Nukem. It will play that perfectly fine. We're not going to bother trying to play anything like Half-Life. It will play that fine. It will even play things like Doom 3 perfectly fine. And that's because the system, even in its current form, was kind of like new and high end really for considering those games back then so we're going to try a few other games we're going to try and push this system a little bit and see if we can still get a rough 60 fps experience we may need to lower that resolution a little bit but let's just see if we can do it the first game that we're going to test is of course half-life 2. now half-life 2 again is a very simple game to run but this does give us an indication of whether this machine can actually run anything or not will that hard drive give us many issues i don't know but let's head over to the settings and see what we've currently got configured it may take a while here to open some menus but we're going to go over to the advanced settings we're pretty much in a mixed high and medium settings here we also do have a bit of aa on here and we've also kind of set the vertical sync so that's enabled it should lock itself to about 60 on this monitor so if we just get back now we can see that we're in a 1080p resolution this game should look fantastic in 1080p so let's see how well it performs Heading back into the game, we can see that we've currently got 60 FPS, but as we turn the mouse, we can see that it is dropping. That's not a good sign here because, like I say, this game should be very, very simple to play. There shouldn't be any issues here, and to be honest, it's not that bad. At 1% lows are taking a bit of a dive here, which you could kind of expect. It's the CPU more than anything. The CPU is currently running at around 100% with that graphics card, just kind of idling around the 52%. There's absolutely, well, around 18%, sorry, the uh, stats are in a different order. So the GPU is actually bored at this point. The CPU is the one that's really keeping it from being able to get its full potential. But the game is playing okay. There's not really any issues here at all. We are in Raven Home, so it's kind of a demanding thing. Oh, we've got some bad guys there. I'm just trying to find the torch button. But I'm going to shoot these guys. We'll see what happens see if making some more physics stuff happen is actually going to kill this machine or not it is just grinding away now the hard drive is grinding away but to be honest it's, it's not playing too bad to be fair we could actually play this game i don't think you get any issues with this the game was probably released before this system was anyway but it's had a few updates over the years we had a bit of a dip there it did flicker a little bit but we'll see what happens let's keep killing the stuff let's get into here i'll press this switch so that i, I don't have to fight them except it's not going to go round. I don't know what's up. Ah, I've ended up walking into it. So I'm not sure what happened then. Somehow the physics just stopped that thing from spinning, but the game actually plays perfectly fine. The system is handling it okay. 1% lows, a little bit low. Hard drive, grinding, slow. It's okay. Let's try a different game. Now the next game is another favorite of mine, but unfortunately you can't get number one on the PC. You can only get number two. And that game is Battlefield Bad Company 2. This one is a little bit more demanding than Half-Life 2, and it really shows in the kind of quality that's set up. But let's head into the settings and see what it's actually configured to. We just pop over here to the options well you do have a limited kind of uh, video settings in this game it's not great but the resolution is set to 720 and for overall quality we've got it on advanced which means we've pretty much got a mixture here of medium and low with a two times msaa v-sync is also on and hbao is off so let's head back into the game picture quality is not great and that is purely because of those low settings there it is a little bit shimmery you can't really see what's going on and it doesn't help with the 720 resolution but we are getting a pretty decent performance here we're currently getting an average of 57 frames per second although the one percent lows are at 11 so you're going to get quite a bit of stuttering in this game i think this is probably a game that shows where the limitations on a system like this is but of course it's again our cpu in this the cpu is currently running at around 97 percent it's 100 percent now that i stepped back Whereas the GTX 460 is only around 40% utilized. That does mean that if we did actually upgrade the CPU in this system, we would actually be able to get much better performance out of this graphics card. Maybe at some point we should actually test this graphics card on its own in our proper benching rig and just see really what can it actually play? How far can we push a graphics card like this? But for now, for £20, this is the kind of performance you're going to get. Continuing on in the game, we can see that there's a lot going to happen on the screen now, and our FPS is starting to dive. We're currently getting an average of 55 still, but the continuous is way down into the 40s. We'll see what happens if we start shooting people. 
it's not the smoothest game to play and it's actually quite difficult to be honest because i can't really see what's going on uh, it's everything's big because of the resolution but at the same time it's not detailed so trying to really target on things is not easy i'm glad that i actually started this game in an easy mode because i would be totally dead by now uh have i run out of ammo i'm not quite sure what's going on now no i've still got some ammo there's lots of explosions going on we just dipped there down to 30 fps it's not a great experience this is probably the limitations so let's try a different game see if we can actually get this playing something that looks reasonably okay and performs okay now if you have a system as old as this and it struggles to play certain games particularly things like battlefield bad company 2 there's always one game that you can resort to to kind of get a decent experience and that game is tomb raider from 2013 this is a game that i used to actually have in the uh, kind of iteration of benchmarks that i used to use when i tested older graphics cards and I still like to get it out now and again because it really does demonstrate what you can do with these kind of things. I would replay this game again and I tend to quite often to be honest because I think it's a fantastic game. And it looks stunning particularly if you've got a more higher end machine. But let's see what this system can do too. Will the CPU stop us from playing the game? Is it going to look absolutely trash? Let's find out. We're now in the game here and our CPU is of course the one that is causing us issues. But we have a better balance now because the GPU is allowing to go up to around 90% utilisation it actually means that this is a pretty decent pairing at the moment for this game but let's head into the settings and see what we've got configured under our graphics options we are running in a 1080p resolution we've got our vsync off at the moment so we should be able to see what it fully can do when we go over to the advanced we've got a normal setting normal looks fantastic on this game it is perfectly fine to run this game in normal high just kind of really kind of adds a little bit of extra detail to things but you can't really tell if i'm honest I, I can't really tell it anyway so normal is a perfectly fine kind of graphics preset to run this game at heading back into the game we can see that we're currently getting an average of 60 frames per second we'll reset those stats there so we can see our one percent lows and they are fluttering or fluctuating between 65 69 70 and then they'll drop down to 50 again in a moment we are actually in the rain at the moment on this game which is the most demanding so the rest of the game should actually play a little bit better than this but to be honest it is more than playable at the moment our 1% lows are not looking great. We've currently got an average of 23 frames per second. That is going to cause a little bit of stuttering in this game. Probably something you won't like to play, to be honest. But again, it's probably caused by a mixture of that CPU, which is currently pegged at 100%. And the fact that there is a bit of rain in the game, and that really does add to that CPU demand. The uh, graphics card is still coping reasonably well at the moment, although the temperatures have shot up now. You can clearly see that the uh, blower card is going to cause you a bit of an issue when um, it can actually get utilized like this the other games had no issue at all but that's because the graphics card wasn't really being used but to be honest the game is actually playable you could play this if you actually drop the resolution and maybe we should do that let's drop the resolution to 720p let's see if we can get those one percent lows even higher we'll just set this down to 1280 by 720 and click apply we can see everything's got a little bit bigger the graphics quality here does get affected quite a bit it's it's kind of really hit that quality there but again i think this is still quite playable particularly if you're on a slightly smaller screen than us but we are now getting an average of 60 fps and the one percent lows have slightly increased to around 30 32 so that's actually pretty good we've got an extra five or six frames out of those one percent lows so it kind of makes the game a little bit more smoother but Again, could you play this game at these kind of settings? You are pretty much getting like an Xbox 360 experience here and people still play those today. So I kind of see this as a win for this system. So this system will actually play games. It's not great on some games like Battlefield Bad Company 2. I'm sure there are thousands of other games that this system could play. We obviously can't try everything. I just want to try some things that would really kind of push it and see if we could actually get them working tomb raider i think you can get playable you have to drop that resolution slightly or at least not run around in the rain and you should be able to get some decent stats out of it and of course half-life 2 runs beautifully fine on it slightly less one percent lows than i would like it's going to cause a little bit of stuttering here and there but probably only when loading new areas the rest of the game was perfectly smooth and you could get a nice clean 60 fps average i'm actually really impressed with this machine for just 20 pounds again like i said at the start of this video this is not a recommendation do not go out and build this this was just a simple challenge from you guys to see if i could do it and i think we can do it this is a gaming pc it can play games let me know in the comments what you think about this system is there anything that we could change in there should we upgrade it should we try and do something with it or should we just kind of count it as a loss now tear it down and do something else 
don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content i'm sure we're going to do many other videos like this because you guys are always throwing me weird challenges to do and i'm sure as always we'll catch you guys in the next one and as a quick reminder do not build a system with a hard drive as your operating system use an ssd it is absolutely terrible it is painful and it's going to cause you so much pain you just will wish that you never did it